Hey there, it's Izzy here. In this video, I'm gonna show you how fast and easy it is to create time-lapse videos using Motion 5. Now, Motion 5 is super powerful. It can do a ton of different things. One thing it can do very easily is create time-lapse videos. In this video, I'm gonna show you the three-step method I use to create time-lapse video in Motion 5. The first step is we're going to resize images to prepare them for motion. Step number two is to bring them into motion, assemble them into a video. Step number three is to export it from motion so that you can use the video in some other apps such as Final Cut Pro 10. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we need to do is create resized images from our original JPEG. So I'm gonna switch over to my finder. You can see I have a folder here called Original Photos. It's 522.2 megabytes. Let me go ahead and open this up so you can see what I have inside of it. You can see I have an image sequence, a series of images. This is straight from the camera. I shot JPEGs, and then my camera, just like a lot of cameras, numbers the images sequentially, and this is very important. You wanna make sure that the images, the file names, have these numbers in there, these padded numbers. So instead of being one, it would be 0001. And instead of being two, it would be 0002. So these are padded numbers. Now, of course, here I have 0443, 0444, 0445, and so on. And if I do a quick preview, I'll just select this first image and hit the space bar. You can see there's the first image, and then I'm gonna hit the down arrow on the next key, and that's the next image, and then here's the next one, and so on and so forth. And you can see the clouds are starting to come in there. Okay, you get the idea. I'm gonna hit the space bar to close down the quick preview. Because these are my original photos, I don't wanna make any changes to the original photos. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this folder by selecting it, going to the file menu, and choosing duplicate or hitting just Command D on the keyboard. Here's the new folder. I'm gonna rename it. I'll call it Photos to resize. And naturally, the reason why I created this new folder with these images, even though they're duplicates, is because resizing photos is a destructive process. You actually change the files into smaller photos. And I don't want to ever destroy my original photos, which is why I created a duplicate folder here. Now, there's a lot of different ways to resize photos. There's different apps that can do it. But one thing that is built into every Mac operating system is an app that's called Preview. A lot of people don't know this, but Preview has resizing capabilities. And you can even do batch resizing. I'll show you how it's done. Let's first of all go to the spotlight, and I'm just going to type preview here to open up the preview app. There it is. It's open. The only thing that's changed really is that I have a new menu bar here. I'm going to choose file. I'm going to go to open. I'm going to select the folder photos to resize, which is the folder I just created, and then I'm going to select open. As you can see, I have all of the files open inside of preview now. If I scroll down, you can see here's the animation happening as the clouds roll in. So these are about, what is it, 134 images. And if your software doesn't work like this, make sure you go to the preview preferences, choose preferences, and make sure that this open groups of files in the same window, make sure that is selected. I'm gonna go ahead and close down preferences. From here, I'm gonna select all the different images. Now they're all selected, you can tell because the names are highlighted here. I'm gonna choose tools from the menu, go down to adjust size, and now I have to make the determination, what do I want the size of the final images to be? Well, I'm not going to be zooming in on this video clip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it the width high definition, which is 1920. I'm going to have some extra pixels on the top and the bottom because the height is 1280 here because of the aspect ratio of my original photo. So I'm going to end up with some extra pixels because really high definition is 1920 by 1080. So I'm going to have a couple hundred extra pixels there that I can work with. I can move the image, the frame up and down within the final frame. I'll show you that later when we get inside of motion. Now I'll click OK to start the resizing process. Depending on the number of images that you're resizing, it could take a while for this step to complete. It looks like the resizing is done. Let's Command Tab over to the Finder and we'll take a look at what we have. The original photos are 522.2 megabytes. That's the original photo folder. And then the photos that I just resized are 30.1 megabytes. So definitely by reducing the size, there's a lot less data there. And the smaller the file size is, the easier time motion is going to have working with the images. Now, the reason I was able to get them down to 1920 wide is because I'm not going to be zooming in on the video. If I was planning on doing some zooms later, then I don't want to just work with 1920 frame. That's not a good idea because then there's no room to zoom. You never want to go beyond 100% because then it starts to soften the image. So if I was going to be zooming, then I might want to work with bigger frame sizes for the photos, bigger photo sizes. So instead of shrinking down to 1920 wide, I might go to like 3840 wide and so on. 
Now that I've shown you how to resize using Preview, let's take a look at another option. The truth is that Preview will probably do a good job with a handful of photos like this, maybe 100 or 200 photos. But if you're going to have to resize a lot of photos, it's probably not up to the task. It's not really designed to do that kind of batch resizing. So you might want to use a different piece of software. Now, Photoshop will do this. You can set up automator actions. You can do a lot of different stuff. I'm going to use Aperture here. So uh, let me open up my Aperture window here. And you can see that I have all the photos. I've already imported them into Aperture. The next step is once you have your project open, you can just Command A to select them all like this. Go up to Export, File, and then Export. We're going to export versions. Let me find my folder where we're going to be putting this. I'll create a new folder called Exported from Aperture. I'll create that folder. And now I choose a different preset. Well, you may not have these presets unless you've created a manual yourself. What I've done, in fact, let me just show you exactly how I did this. I'm going to select Edit. I'm going to choose a preset that's already there. For example, this JPEG fit within 1024 by 1024. I'll select that, and I'll hit plus to duplicate it. I'll give it a new name. I'll just call this uh, 1920 by 1920. Hit Return then with this preset selected, I can make the changes. Now, the image quality, I'm just going to leave it at 10. But the width, of course, I want this to be 1920. And what it's saying here is you want this to fit within a 1920 by 1920 image. Now, 1920 is actually uh, too big of a height there. So maybe I'll just change this to 1280 because that's what it's going to resize down to. I'll leave everything else the same. Now, with this selected and the folder open, I can just hit Export Versions. Now, one thing I want you to be careful of is that when it, with the name format, I'm just using the current version name. And so the file name example is that image underscore 0443.jpg. I want those padded numbers. That's very important. I want those numbers. I want the images to be numbered sequentially so when I bring them into motion, it'll recognize it as an image sequence. From here, all I have to do is hit Export Versions, and it'll start the work. Now, keep in mind, Aperture can handle a large number of photos. So if you're doing a lot of different photos, this is probably a good option for you. I clicked on this little exporting indicator, and you can see the details. I'm Right now, it's exported image 12 of 134. Now, what I'm going to do is, through the magic of editing, I'm going to cut this when it's done, and then we'll come back to our video. Aperture is done exporting the images now, so they're resized. Let's go over to a Finder, and we'll take a look. And we have a folder here called Exported from Aperture. It's a little bit bigger, 38.5 megabytes. With the same number of images and the same frame sizes, I can only assume that the images are probably a little higher quality now, very likely due to the quality settings that I was using inside Aperture. All right, well, now we have a couple different options for the resized photos. We have the photos that we resized using Preview. And we have the photos that we resized using Aperture. Of course, in your own workflow, you can do one or the other. You don't need to do both. I was just demonstrating. So you have a couple different options there to choose from. Now we need to go over to Motion. I'm going to Command Tab over to Motion now. You can see I have my project browser window open. This is the window that pops up when you open up Motion. I'm going to select Motion Project. I'm going to change the preset. Make sure it's set on high definition 1080. The frame rate where I am in North America is 29.97 NTSC. That's fine. The duration is 10 seconds. That's fine too. I'll click Open. From here, the first thing I'm going to do is save this. I'm going to save it as. And I'll go to the right folder. Let's see, inside here, and then Motion Projects. I'll call this Time Lapse 01. I'll click OK. Now, from here, this is the easiest thing to do in the world. All I'm going to do is make sure I navigate in the file browser over to my hard drive and then into the proper folder where I can see my folders that have the resized images in them. So for example, this folder here is the exported from Aperture folder. If I double click on it, you'll see that I just see one file inside here. Well, how could that possibly be? It's just one file, and if I click on it, you can see that the detail says that it's a JPEG sequence. Now, if you're seeing more than one file, make sure you have this button selected. This shows an image sequence as a collapsed one file. So if I unselect it, you can see now I see all the different images. right? OK, so I'm going to scroll back up. I'm going to select it again. I'll choose it. And then I'll just simply import this into my project. Let's go to our Zoom window here and choose a Fit so we can see the whole thing. Your resolution might be different on your screen. I'm working at a very small resolution right now. And let's take a look at what we have here. I'm just going to hit Play. And sure enough, we have our time lapse video. And then there's a whole bunch of blank black frames at the end. Well, I don't want those. And that the reason why it's like that is because my project is longer than my video clip. 
Well, here's a very simple way to fix that. First of all, make sure you're showing frames here just to make it easy. If you're not, then just choose this little pop-up menu where it says show frames. Make sure it's set to show frames instead of time code. Then I'm gonna hit Shift O on the keyboard to go to the end and you can see that it's 134 frames long. That's the end of that layer, the out point of that layer. So if that video clip is 134 frames long, then that's what I want my whole project to be too. Well, right now, the time code indicator is showing me the current frame within my project. If I just click once on this, then it's gonna show me the duration of the project, and you can see that it's 300 frames long. Well, a very fast way for me to change the duration of my project is just to double click right here in the time code indicator, change it to 134, hit return, and now my project is the same length as my layer. So there are no black frames at the end, you see? So if I just hit the space bar, it'll play through the whole thing, and I have looping turned on right now, so it's just gonna start over from the very beginning. Now from here, if I wanted to, I could add some effects and that sort of thing, but I'm not gonna do that, I'm just gonna export it. But real quick, before I export it, I wanna show you one more thing. Let's zoom out a little further. I'll go to 12% uh, zoom here. You can see I have extra pixels at the top and at the bottom that aren't showing up in the frame. So I have a little bit of flexibility. If I wanna readjust how this framing looks, what I can do is I can click and while I'm holding down with the mouse button, I'm gonna hold down shift on the keyboard and that's gonna help me constrain the movement to just up and down so I'm not accidentally moving it left and right. You could see if I wanted to, I could move it up like this, but I don't really like that because the light post, you can see it's getting cut off at the top there. Uh, maybe I want it, this is probably a little bit too much headroom there, so maybe I want it something like this. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And of course, when I'm changing the zoom level here, I'm not changing the actual frame of the video. I'm not changing the size of the video. I'm just changing my perspective here on the screen, make it easier to see more. All right, I'm gonna change this back to fit. And now we move on to step number three, which is to export the video. In motion, it's very easy. You just go to share, export movie, if you're going to be using this video clip in something like Final Cut Pro 10, for example, you wanna make sure and export to Apple ProRes, one of the versions of ProRes. Now you have different options depending on the quality settings you need. Apple ProRes 422 for my purposes are just fine. I'm gonna include the video only on this. There isn't any audio. On my render settings, I, I don't have an alpha channel, which is an area of transparency in this, so I don't need to include that. Render quality, I'm gonna change that to best. It's high definition video, so there aren't any fields. That's outside the scope of this video, but don't need fields in high definition. Motion blur, I don't have any kind of animation or anything, so I'm gonna leave that off, and frame blending, I'll just turn that on, no big deal. I'm gonna click next. I'll double click on my exported videos folder here, and I'll call this time-lapse 01 master, because this is the master version of the video, and then I just click save. And now it's going to export this entire video clip for me, and then bring it up into the QuickTime player so I can watch it. I'll just hit the space bar. Now I'm watching this in QuickTime Player, but of course this file is ProRes 422, which is great for bringing into Final Cut Pro 10. So at this point, I can use this as part of a bigger project that I'm working on. And that's how easy it is to use Motion 5 to create time-lapse videos. And that image sequence capability that it has just to see a whole bunch of images as one file, that's the real secret to why it's so easy to use. Anyway, that should give you an idea of a possible workflow you might opt to use. Hopefully you found this information helpful. I'll see you in the next video.